You have to speak up into the microphone. Please don't don't move the cup because then uh that's all we hear with the microphone. Do not oh do not walk over those cables, baby. Oh jeez Louise. What? This is not professional at all. No. Hey y'all, my name is Daniel Piot, and I'm a freelance director and DP based out of Dallas. Been home for a couple weeks now, not a lot of shoots going on, uh, so I started to get the creative itch to shoot something. I've been following folks like Peter Lindgren and Daniel Schiffer on YouTube, and I love the style they've developed. I feel like it fits really well with kind of my own style of shooting and editing, and so I figured I'd give something like that a shot. So I started thinking, what do I have access to that I could shoot? And then it dawned on me, I could do something with my Mustang in the garage. And then I remembered, I don't have a Mustang. I've got a 2000 gold Camry with some hail damage. And I also don't have a garage. So then I thought, what else do I love that I could shoot? If only there was something I love that I have in my house. And then it hit me, you know what? There isn't enough of out there, people making coffee. Besides, I love coffee and more than that, I love the Breville machine that gives me that coffee. I haven't done a lot of product cinematography, so I figured a shiny reflective object would probably be the easiest thing to start with. Even though I was pretty sure I was gonna nail it right out of the gate, I decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and do a pre-light day just in case. But instead of a pre-light day, it was more like a pre-light evening after everyone's gone to sleep. So I got all of my lights set up, uh, and because it was nighttime, there wasn't much ambient light, and I kind of liked the contrasty look I was getting. I also decided to do a color wash on the background just to make it more stylized. But the next morning when I got ready to actually start shooting the spot, I realized that the brighter, kind of lighter look with all the ambient light coming in was probably a little more, you know, on brand for a product like this. So I tweaked my lighting some and here's what I ended up with. I'm using my Aperture 120D with a light dome as sort of a big soft key. I actually found that dropping it down lower um, gave me some nice specular highlights on the bean hopper, which I really liked. Then I came from the other side with the Draycast panel light through a big diffusion disc to give it a nice soft fill. Everything was still kind of a little dark underneath where the group head and the tray and all that is, so I brought in a silver reflector disc and just bounced some light back in, found the right angle, and that reflection actually brought a lot of nice light and dimension to the front of the machine. I still wanted to bring a little bit of a blue wash to the background like I had with that nighttime look. I feel like blue tones look really cool with the metallic element, so I used a falconized RGB light and I dialed it to a super deep blue teal type color. I have a couple quasars I just picked up, so I dropped those little two foot tubes on the counter behind the espresso machine. But that quasar helped to offset the hopper, made like a little glow, kind of a silhouette that helped that to really shine. I ended up with another two foot quasar, uh, taped it to the C-stand arm as a kind of a back rim light that I could move around. I actually ended up moving that light quite a bit for a lot of the close ups to help backlight the steam. Uh, when I was pulling the espresso shot, some of those things just to give it a little pop. So with the lighting dial in, it was time to choose from my list of available talent, and at first we tried casting a young, unknown talent. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. And action. Uh, oh, I can't yeah, it. It. So I ended up going with option number two, which was my wife. Uh, fortunately, she was really excited about it. Daniel wants to do a spec spot with our Breville um, coffee maker. And guess who gets to be the talent? So I got to work and started knocking out shots, and fortunately I decided to storyboard everything out first. As we went along, I did kind of tweak and modify some of what I had storyboarded, but it was really helpful just to look back and kind of see what shots I was missing, if there was a transition idea that I'd forgotten about. Day two of shooting. Where are you when I need you? I need somebody who knows how to do hair and makeup, because I don't, and possibly even somebody that just has makeup. Not gonna go well. Once we finished shooting, I took it into post and started putting everything together. I actually filmed all of this on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which I got a couple of when they first came out and I love the look. I've been using it for freelance work and shooting ProRes, so I hadn't really gotten a chance to play with the Blackmagic RAW much. Granted, there were a few glitches with the B-RAW plugin and Premiere, but once I got past those and got everything ironed out, I love the color rendering, I love the sharpness and detail of the footage. It actually plays back incredibly smoothly for RAW. I took a bit of massaging, but eventually I got to an edit that I was happy with. Then I got a bunch of music tracks off of Artlist to kind of audition with the edit and see what I liked. One of the things I like about Artlist is I can download as many tracks as I want and I can try them out with the edit and see you know, which track really fits the best. I actually ended up going with a track that's very different than what I had in my head, um, but once I heard it, I felt like it was a really good fit for the piece. And I actually tweaked my edit a little bit to match that track. Once I had the music chosen, I did a sound design pass, and I think that really brought the piece to life, kind of gave the machine a life of its own. I love 
what sound design brings to an edit. I don't always have the time or the budget to do that for every client project, and it's not always necessary, but when you have the time and the resources to do it, it adds a lot. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to give a big shout out to a couple buddies of mine who helped me on this. My friend Brad is a super talented filmmaker, motion graphics guy who does a little bit of everything. I uh, use some of his lenses on this piece. And my buddy Matt, or Matty Cakes as I like to call him, uh, made some sick motion graphics to go with the piece as well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I felt good to be able to finally work on something creative, even if I didn't get to leave my house. So if you're stuck at home as well, grab your camera, go shoot something. I'd love to see what other people are coming up with out there. That's it, thanks for watching guys. Nope, hands down, gotta be quiet. He said, he, said we ha he has little kids and these are his little kids. What? No, I rented you guys from the acting store. No you didn't. How about I pay you guys in chocolate and Chick-fil-A? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, go drink my coffee. All right, here we go. We're almost done. We're gonna finish this. Okay, let's. <laughs> Calic element, so. So I used the. <laughs> Make it into I see that. Nope, please don't touch that. What's that? That's the microphone. Okay.